the physiological components of these depressions, which I'll now mention, uh, uh, which can go on for months or even years, uh, uh, affect uh, multiple hormonal systems, sympathetic nervous system, uh, and depressed patients, uh, surprisingly, are very inflamed. They have much inflammation in the brain and much inflammation in the body. And that's because stress precipitates inflammation uh, in the brain and the body. And I think the reason that's so is that in very early, uh, thousands of years ago, uh, when individuals uh, uh, perceived the danger of stress, they had a full-blown stress response uh, to uh, premonitorily protect them uh, if they got into a fight or flight or mortal struggle uh, with uh, another being. And I think for that reason, uh, stress precipitates uh, the stress response even now. So that if uh, emotional stress, like public speaking, public speaking causes an activation of the stress response and a change in, in many of these physiological parameters that I mentioned, inflammation, uh, increase in stress hormones, uh, and a variety of other changes that uh, adversely mm -hmm. affect the body. So that because of these changes, depression is also a systemic disorder. So that patients have premature uh, coronary artery disease, stroke, uh, diabetes, and osteoporosis. And uh, that shortens their lives by seven years. And mm -hmm. so it's a major medical emergency, actually, to have depression. And I think that's poorly understood, that it's associated with severe and long-lasting physiological changes that shorten the lifespan, and that the depression needs to be treated, and that before the depression is treated, perhaps uh, prophylactic uh, medications can be given to decrease the propensity to coronary artery disease, stroke, diabetes, or osteoporosis. 